Captain of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at the appointed time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So what do we have going on today? Well, uh, when we last uh, met, I said uh, fund buying was probably over uh, at the end of yesterday or the first part of this morning. And I think uh, a great deal of what we have now is that. One of the reasons is the volume is uh, vaporous. Um, we had about 7.2 billion shares as we started the show yesterday, which wasn't strong. But we're doing about 5.8 billion shares now, so about 1.2 billion shares lighter. Uh, now, volume is on Friday a little bit less, but uh, for a 60-point move, I would suspect we have a lot more. Does that mean I'm exceedingly bullish? No. It does mean that I'm really kind of sanguine about higher or lower. Um, you know what most people don't talk about in the stock market? They say market's going higher, market's going lower. How about the market's going sideways? Um, and when we uh, met on Tuesday at uh, 2 p.m., um, I think the market opened it at 41.52 or so on that. We're at 41.12. I'm going to say that's close enough, uh, especially the way we opened up. Uh, the whole week uh, on a bigger scale at 30,000-foot uh, view, Probably not going to look like much in a month or two months from now. Uh, everything seems to be more important on the day that it happens uh, than the, than uh, what it is like months, weeks, years later. But uh, that's just part of it. I don't see that much going on. I do see some bear moves. I mean, some bear raids. Uh, most of that's uh, based on very dubious uh, propaganda in the uh, in the legacy media, uh, and so when I look at that stuff, I mean, there's just a lot of stuff that is incredibly easy to see that they're gaslighting us uh, on. And again, I'm I'm wondering a lot of times uh, as a prime example, uh, just a ton of uh, gaslighting in Micron today. Um, and these people are all telling you they're experts. Well, I don't know. Um, at the highs, they weren't telling you to, to sell it or short it. And kind of around here on the lows, they're telling you to sell it. Uh, but uh, if I saw one report that seemed rather over the top, uh, this and a handful of other things, I also see the media beating up on uh, Musk and Tesla. Uh, for years, I brought up all the stuff um, that uh, was incredibly dubious. Um, and of course, only when he starts talking about free speech, does anybody actually start uh, changing their mind a little bit on it? Uh, he built a, a one mile underground uh, tunnel in Las Vegas. Uh, but because it, uh, a variety of things, I think a foundation for another hotel, it would have been half a mile. Uh, of course, he said that uh, cars were going to move at 600 miles an hour down these things. Uh, they move at a uh, 30 miles an hour, which is about 29 miles an hour faster uh, than everything moves on the street if you've ever been to Las Vegas, especially on the Strip. Uh, one mile an hour is fast there. But, uh, you know, the whole idea that somehow everybody's found religion with Musk is kind of silly to me uh, because they uh, eh, they missed about 100 things of uh, stuff that he said and uh, were willing to shuffle it off until he decided to buy Twitter. So a lot of hypocrisy in what's going on. 
Um, you know, he said we were going to be to Mars by 2019. You know, he, he can say a thousand things and everybody will just glum on like he's uh, that he's all that. But man, talk about giving anybody free speech and you're the pariah of the uh, tech world suddenly. But uh, eh, I do digress. Uh, today, like I said, not much going on out here. Got some questions to ask uh, or uh, that have been asked earlier in the day. Said I'd answer them on the show. Um, is uh, there anything to really be had uh, about uh, San, San, is it Sandberg uh, from Facebook, uh, Metamucil leaving? And I don't think so. We talked about this last I'm going to say last September or October, I talked about it on the show for a couple of days. And much like uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, where we used to get pictures on the May Day Parade, where they'd uh, take all their uh, nuclear missiles down Main Street and everybody would wave and have a parade, uh, they'd look and see who was standing closest to the leader at the time to say, you know, who was doing this or what or the other. But uh, there had been pretty much a constant drum beat across last summer into last fall uh, that those two, Sandberg uh, and, uh, and uh, Zuckerberg, were not getting along and didn't even talk to each other anymore. So I think this is just uh, the fait accompli, finally complete, although I don't know Latin. Or is that French? It's probably French, isn't it? So don't think you know, there's a whole lot there. Uh, I think uh, Metamucil, uh, Facebook, uh, or fake book. Um, just uh, the chickens are going to come home to roost. He kind of knows that he's going to either be in front of the House or the House and the Senate next year on a uh, uh, kind of like an endless rotating spit. And the, to a great deal, uh, she was the one pushing uh, to get into uh, politics. Uh, and everybody thought that she was so great. I never thought that anything she did was so great. They were in the right market. Uh, they had a CEO with a killer mentality, and sometimes it brings the company down uh, like it has in Facebook when the reality does not match uh, the books. And a lot of what Facebook did was just plain out thievery uh, for the way they charged um, for ads, uh, we know a lot of it was, uh, you know, just driven up by bots and other things like that now. So, that, you know, he's going to end up being on a, a, a slowly roasting spit. And I don't think she wanted to be around, um, much like uh, Jack Dorsey from Twitter before the pandemic hit, was running off to hide in Africa so he couldn't get served um, subpoenas by the by the Senate or House panel. I can't remember which one it was. And then a pandemic came along and he didn't worry about it too much. He just got really high before he went in front of them. Um, but uh, you know what? You get these kind of folks in here. They aren't gods. They put their pants on one leg at a time, just like us. Uh, they just tend to be a little bit uh, more, eh, what would you say? vicious about it. We'll be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve and a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. As we come back, hopefully, we still have uh, Larry from Wyoming on the line. Are you there, Larry? I'm here, Dave. I, okay. I enjoyed your intro. Yeah. It <laughs> well, made me think about when I was a young, young boy, and my dad, when I was three to five, he dragged me on Sunday to the uh, the coffee uh, gang he would meet with. And I just remember, I didn't have the words in that age, but just the bombastic, dubious nature of all the words flying around. And nothing has changed. That's <laughs> That's what you made me think of. But uh, there you go. Yeah, they, they call it word salad now. I didn't know that. Yeah. I found that out last week. So I, I have a question, and it's involving um, how you feel. You'll be the third man in. Uh, Shane Smoley came on this morning uh, on Larry's show about the, you know, the divergence he tracks with the neutralized uh, MACD in the gold world. And then your buddy Tim Ord um, really loved the head and shoulders pattern. So um, there's a lot of iterations that could occur. I mean, it could pop and then fail. But anyways, how do you feel on the whole gold, gold issue? Well, I'm not exactly sure what time scale. Um, it's Smoley in his last name, right? Uh, through 25. So, he, he's, he's talking through 2025. And Tim um, Ward I'm, you know, basically I'm on the weekly chart. With, you know, I'm much yeah. more familiar with Tim Ward. And I know that, you know, if, especially around TFNN, if if you're not right in the next 20 minutes, everybody thinks you're wrong. I mean, he he really caters toward the the guy that's going to buy and sell every quarter for uh, you know some kind of uh, money manager that you go to. I mean, that's really his big clientele. Um, so if you want to be in 401ks, that kind of stuff. Um, it's really good to listen to him. In the short term, um, it's like the drunk st standing in the middle of the highway. Uh, all he has to do is take a, a weave one way or the other, and he's going to get hit. So if you got very tight stops, it's not a it's not a great thing to to listen uh, to the very long term. So you got to know exactly where you're at and how long you're willing to stay committed, especially in things like bonds and gold. 
uh, because they tend to be incredibly long term moves and playing them short term tends to watch a bunch of people get chopped to bits. So I, are yeah. you thinking that kind of long term? Uh, no, not really. I wish I, I, I do see the, the, the more I do this, the more I see the merit in Tim Ort's uh, reasoning. And he's wise enough to see a top. So, uh, no, I, I'm trying to understand more about uh, the merits of, of looking longer at these these things. But Shane Smol- Smoley is basically saying, from 1800, his target's like 11, 1200. I mean, that's a 40 percent correction. That'll take gold miners to like nothing. You know, I kind of I my belief right now. And if the evidence changes, I'll change my view. But uh, at least in the medium uh, and longer term, in the medium term, I think we're in some level of stagflation. And if you look at gold really up until about it, when it really started moving in the 70s, much like uh, now where we have uh, runaway gas prices and uh, the market could easily see a huge drawdown. There wasn't a lot of gold really until about 1980 or 81. And, you know, we could have a little bit of time before things take over. Does it really go lower? I don't think so. But, you know, do you, the question is, uh, I remember Bill Gates and I was at some deal and somebody asked him uh, if uh, he was upset about uh, uh, missing the, uh, the Internet. I think this is like in 2000, right? He says, uh, I mean, you guys really didn't come along till uh, 1995. He says, we started on that stuff in, in you know, 1990. We were yeah. five years early, um, yeah. you know, by the time it actually got to something. So there's right. kind of a theory in technology that you just kind of have to stand there on the railroad tracks until the train comes by and run, runs you over with, you know, the technology catches to you. And then, you know, you grab hold and hang on for dear life. And there's kind of that. I think we have that kind of right now um, more stagflation. I think that could go into inflation. But I think it may take maybe the rest of the year. So, yeah. uh, you know. You don't think we're see- going to have an outright deflationary event in the economy in your, you know, overall? Deflationary? Don't think so. Wow. Okay. I think they'll throw more money at the market if it, if they've got to cause, you yeah. know, some inflation. That's easy to do. The you know, the the big thing is that we have a market where eighty percent of all the bad things could go away in one day. And that is if we decided to start actually producing oil here in the United States. And my belief is that 80% of all the problems that we see everywhere, high uh, food prices, high fertilizer prices, literally everything is connected to uh, the cost of uh, moving stuff around. And that is by one big policy, and that is no U.S. production of oil uh, to any extent. Um, And, I mean, even to the point where yeah, yeah, what was it, yesterday or the day before yesterday? Yesterday, um, the uh, the Saudis uh, say that they'll help with uh, production raise. And then, of course, within two hours, uh, the propagandists come out and start trying to stick their thumb in the eye of the Saudis. And so the Saudis pull back almost instantly. They're interested in the headline of more energy production. Not really interested in the in the actual ID or uh, the idea of actual energy production. So I think we have some people pretty much committed to something that's going to make it incredibly tough to go forward. Um, but again, maybe political pressure gets high enough with the coming election uh, that we get a change here uh, in energy production. And I think, if you wanted to see gold go back to kind of acting the way it was, I think a lot of people that would normally be in gold are off in crude right now. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to use it. It's in a, a artificial uh, level of 
uh, demand because uh, we're making sure that we don't actually pump that much more or create much more here in the United States, a, a policy of less uh, production. And, you know, the rest of the world is just not going to stop um, exploiting that. So the yeah. Saudis, even if they say they're going to probably uh, pump more oil, it's just going to be a little. It's not going to be a lot. They're not going to do enough to, to hurt the prices until we actually get in and start stealing market. Um, oh, it's market interesting. So, yeah. so, yeah, I think, uh, I think gold and uh, crude are really linked. If you want to hang on, that's fine. If not, we'll be back in a minute. Okay, thank you. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a, uh, it's something. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. As we go in to yet another wonderful segment here on the Power Trading Hour. Okay, got a few may question about Tesla. Where do I see it going? I think uh, not short term, but we'll say medium term. Probably before the fourth of July, we retest five uh, thirty nine uh, forty nine. That's the long term low out there. Um, and that's where I think it would probably find fairly decent support. In the short term, um, I'm not that bearish on literally anything. I think we could go, as I said at the very opening of the show, I think we could go sideways 
maybe into the 4th of July and drive everybody nuts, the bulls and the bears. It's been a long time since we've had a sideways market. Uh, options are kind of firming up on that way. I'll know more next week. But there's just not that much out here that says or screams uh, that we're either going that much higher or that much lower. Um, I did uh, talk to uh, uh, a uh, to uh, Steve yesterday and Tim Ord today and uh, some other ones. And um, I, I thought it was kind of interesting that if you're not a bear, you're getting the most uh, probably – I think in 20 years, uh, the uh, at least Tim said, the most vicious mail that he's ever gotten uh, about uh, not being bearish and deciding the market's going lower. Um, Steve and I have got kind of the, the same gang of people that email us on an ongoing basis. You can normally tell they're fairly, that they're cranks right away. And that is because they either type in all lowercase or all uppercase. They don't understand either a caps lock or the shift key. So you can you can notice, you almost instantly know that there's some kind, they're either drunk or some kind of crank. But generally these guys get very fired up if you're talking about the top of a market and you're going short, or if you're in a market like the now that is probably going down eventually, but it's not going down today. And they're gonna they're they're gonna light themselves on fire, uh, like that uh, monk in Vietnam, um, in the saffron, to uh, actually uh, just say that the market is going down today. They'll they'll say it. Email me every single day that the market's going lower, and by the end of the day or a couple of days later, it's right back to where it's at. So I you know, those, that kind of thing I, I've seen it before. It's kind of a, a kind of a an adjunct to uh, Tom getting e uh, uh, phone calls about gold and it, uh, is it a bottom yet? Is it a bottom yet? Generally, when people quit calling and asking, "Is there a bottom?" Uh, you're more, more, much more likely to find a bottom. And I think when these cranks really kind of give up, the market might be able to go lower. We may even see higher. I just don't see evidence, a great deal of evidence. For either one, options continue to kind of uh, auger in. They have all day long. Um, in the uh, newsletter this morning, I said, you know, we were looking at a fairly wide range for options. Uh, it had been fairly narrow, and I didn't really have a good call other than I thought lower today. But uh, 41.25 to 41.70 uh, was the uh, kind of the the – what option market makers were looking for today. So I'm not very surprised. The only one that's really missing that almost always hits is Apple. Um, I think it was at, uh, if I go back here and look, two, two, two. what's it at now? Uh, 145.48. It, it, everybody thought 150 on it, at least the option market makers. That is another one of the stocks that I think really had a lot of people coming after it today. So there was probably a bear trap in it, much like in Micron. Um, maybe a lot of people buying calls. Um, and they decided to just thrash Micron and Apple together. Because both of these things are trying to get pinned at a much lower level. Maybe they sold a lot of calls this week or had short positions on. Uh, hard to say because, uh, again, there's always a lot of arbitrage in those. But uh, the one in Micron seems to be rather blatant, um, beyond the pale. And so I'm thinking that's kind of the same thing I'm seeing in Apple now. Um, but uh, I do digress. 877-927-6648. Okay. Uh, Okay, question about uh, Apple. Uh, not today. Well, you bounced off the low. You're kind of pulling back here. They're in a lot of volume. What's in fact, let's go back here and look at the uh, spies and the volume on the queues, too, and see what we have. Uh, so you've got 45 million shares on the spies. Uh, that's compared to 80 million shares yesterday. 
So 45, eh. So let's say you end up with 60 against 80. Today is just an inside day. There is no signal. As much as I imagine I'm going to get yet another ton of emails uh, chastising me for not being bearish or being short, I'm neither. I'm, in fact, I'm 100% cash right now. So I don't think that there's a lot of reasons. When I see a reason, I'll move it. But at the moment, uh, options predictions can tend to contract on both the put and call side, and that generally uh, predates very narrow trading ranges going forward. And I'm going to say that if we look at this chart in a week from now, um, we're probably going to just say this week and maybe even the next week, uh, was a week where we just went sideways. Of course, the uh, next Wednesday's uh, Delta Neutral Day. After that, I think the market might uh, open up a great deal more. I know no one loves to hear sideways market unless you're selling spreads, but uh, eh, you can always do that too. Uh, question about AMD. I think we get a question on this every single day, so we'll just look at it anyway. Um, not a lot going on here. Um, take a quick look at NVIDIA, NVDA. Same thing. You just have these charts look pretty much the same. you got an inside day. You're probably going to have about the same or a little lighter volume out here. Probably the only thing I find really interesting on um, either one of these is uh, you're starting to see uh, ads. Um, for, let's see, let me get them up here, ads for uh, the video cards, a great deal of them. They were here earlier in the day here. Um, a 3070, I mean, you couldn't find one in stock for two years. Now you can get them. Uh, they're basically being sold close to, or, uh, this is actually an NVIDIA card made by Gigabyte, but they're buying their chips from them, reference designs. So they're 600 bucks, which is uh, standard retail. It's no big deal, other than the fact that this thing was uh, selling for 200 bucks more than that just uh, 45, 60 days ago. So uh, there are some, there is some movement out here. But again, I think a lot of this is everybody knowing that new video cards are coming out probably mid-July uh, for NVIDIA and AMD and a lot of these cards aren't they want to get rid of them before they uh, push out the new stuff we'll be back in a minute are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are 
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return. Okay, what else do we have out here? Oh, hey, NVIDIA. As we said, I'm starting to see a lot of ads for both AMD and NVIDIA, but a great deal of this is uh, they have a lot of new product cycles coming on and they're kicking them out. Um, a lot of people in in the uh, pundit uh, YouTube uh, computer part pundit guys think that uh, uh, that uh, we're really just going out of the frying pan into the fire once again, and and three months from now you won't be able to get a video card ag again. I don't know how true that is. I think that they have gotten production up a, a bit. Uh, one of the other things is uh, just the cost of these cards, I think, has gotten to the point where people are probably uh, not that dependent in, on anymore on getting the latest, greatest card. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's really a software-driven game. And E3, which is the big conference for computer games, is generally, I think, like in August to get ready for the fall. Uh, so, again, that's kind of the next big impotence. If someone comes with a game that really drives some kind of card that costs two grand and people are willing to buy it, um, you get the kind of moves. But, again, we're looking at uh, both NVIDIA and AMD talking about bringing out new video cards in the next few months. They're all going to uh, be able to use massive amounts of power. So they're probably not going to fit in a lot of existing machines without at least replacing the power supply and probably bolting on four fans to keep the heat down. So this is kind of a big move. Maybe they'll be able to, uh, uh, in, in next versions, drop the power demands for these things. But they're going to be pretty big. So I'm not um, in the camp that NVIDIA and AMD are worth nothing. They've come way off the top. I'm not saying that they're valued at the correct price either. Um, but uh, I don't think, especially with NVIDIA, I think NVIDIA has a ticket to write supercomputer dumb. And, of course, they're working on some other stuff in, uh, in uh, quantum computing. Um, but these guys have not, AMD's made some smaller mistakes. NVIDIA has made almost no mistakes. Uh, in I'm going to say in about two, two and a half years in putting together a business uh, that sells to business and not gamers anymore. Uh, this last quarter was the, was the quarter, and they think it's going to be the last where the majority of their business is people playing video games. They sold more cards and products and resources and services to business than they did. Uh, and we're not talking about crypto, folks. We're talking about actual businesses. So their business has changed. They've gone from selling cards for people playing video games to people making giant computers, crunching huge amounts of numbers. Um, and I think that's just going to continue. There's a big business in uh, machine learning, and uh, they pretty much captured, I'm going to say, 80% of it at the moment. Now, there are people working around them that want, don't want to pay them the big dollars for their chips, but... Uh, 
there's nobody really close to what they're building right now. Uh, AMD is a distant, distant second. So, you know, why NVIDIA doesn't build processors, they've kind of uh, toyed with that with trying to buy ARM. Uh, that deal fell. Uh, by the way, my guess is they're not going to give up, and they're going to get into the same business. So they're going to have processors and uh, uh, actual graphic processors, processors, uh, a lot of other stuff. And again, you know, the Xilinx uh, Altera deal. You've got Intel actually trying to get into. We haven't looked at that for a while. Intel is actually trying to get into the video card business. The interesting thing is they announced a bunch of video cards, and then none of them have become available. So a lot of people, especially that the uh, tech glitterate on YouTube are kind of mad at Intel uh, that there were all these uh, cards that were promised and pushed and you can't buy one of them. The only thing you can get for new Intel's new video graphics card is built into a laptop and it doesn't quite work as well as Intel said it would. Um, you've got uh, Intel really around support at 43 bucks. That's pretty standard stuff here. Uh, okay. Uh, question about the SMHs here as I go off on a rant. Uh, okay. I mean, if you look at this downtrend line from 318 all the way in today, you're right kind of into that now. Um, the big thing that you had was a lower low on lighter volume. You really wanted to see 13 million shares from that March 14th low uh, blown away. And you really, I mean, it came close, but it was still lighter. And then you got down to the low with about 8 million shares. Could you get a little bit of a pullback? You could. But at the present time, I don't see a lot. Again, every one of these is the risk of waking up and finding the Chinese have invaded. Uh, right now, uh, it's hurricane season and, or, or cyclone season over there. They're probably not going to put a lot of their ships to sea. China has a fairly long and storied history over the last 2,000 years of trying to attack island nations. And uh, each time uh, a, a typhoon is whipped up and they've lost all their ships and men. And, uh, of course, the Japanese call it the divine wind. But uh, I, I think probably until we get a little farther out of the typhoon season, we're probably not going to see the Chinese. Uh, they, they remember it a great deal. They're big history buffs. So I don't think they're going to go out there any time uh, the weather looks a little spotty. They'll continue to keep pressure on the Taiwanese. Taiwanese are starting to arm up, though, so it may not be the easy cakewalk, uh, especially now that uh, China sees uh, Russia getting bogged down in the Ukraine and uh, why Taiwan doesn't think they have the ability to, uh, uh, to fend off the Chinese uh, forever. Uh, they may just uh, try to nickel and dime them into a Vietnam uh, Ukraine-like uh, quagmire uh, for a long time. Anyway, um, there's always that risk. I didn't think it was very big this week um, or the last couple of weeks, but I'm much. I'm hoping that sideways action will bring the cost and the premiums down of a great deal of these stocks in the SMH, and that will give us an opportunity to get back in some of the semis if we find them attractive at... Uh, a way of playing, uh, playing them with a lot less risk. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> uh, let's see what we have out here. More emails. Uh, okay. Question about UVXY. So let's take a quick look at that UVXY. Um. I mean, it kind of looks good, but uh, not surprising. 1134 is the next uh, test down here from uh, the April 21st low, kind of around that at the moment. We'll be back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. Well, as we go into the final segment of the wonderful Power Trading Hour, I've decided to save some lives. And yes, how many people have had a heart attack or just even had their heart skip a beat when they wake up and find out that their stock is uh, 20 times uh, lower than it was uh, when the Friday when they walked away? Well, in case you missed it, Monday, Monday, Monday is the stock split for Amazon 20 to 1. So do not be shocked uh, and wait for it. A lot of stuff may be kind of uh, messed up uh, if they don't include that in right away in the uh, in the splits uh, for the ETFs and everything else. Um, I would recommend uh, that you might want to take an hour and make sure every, all the dust is settled because this thing is in everything. Um, and we haven't had one for a long time. But the amount of ETFs and stuff that Amazon is uh, held with and other stuff, there are going to be some people that haven't done the right math. And you may find an opportunity to get in or get out uh, Monday morning before everybody figures out that the uh, numbers quite don't add up um, on the ETFs surrounding Amazon. I think they'll get the stock right. But generally, someone always misses uh, – 
you know, if it's in just one ETF, the odds are probably not that big that someone's going to miss it. But when it's in all of them, yeah, someone does have a tendency to either program it wrong or just, uh, eh, they were out partying all weekend and didn't quite get to it by Monday morning. Uh, and everybody starts screaming. And, of course, uh, some feeds won't have the uh, reverse split put in there correctly, some other stuff like that. So just be aware of that come Monday morning. Don't have a heart attack when you see it uh, down uh, 120th of its former price. So when you can, not when you have to. See you Monday. Same bad time. Same bad time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky.